you. Thank you. Are there any Liberty lovers in the house? Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the home stretch. Here we come, Iowa. I want to tell you why America needs to hear your voice. We live in a world that is increasingly becoming unmoored from tradition, delinked from our ancestors, and separated from immutable notions of right and wrong. Great questions of faith elude us because we have let banality become accepted as a superlative and vulgarity accepted as the norm. Einstein wrote, the most beautiful emotion we can experience is the mysterious. He to whom this emotion is a stranger, who can no longer wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead, a snuffed out candle. To sense that behind anything that can be experienced there is something that our minds cannot grasp, whose beauty and sublimity reaches us only indirectly, this is religiousness. In order to embrace the mystery, we must be free. Without liberty, our senses are dulled and dumbed down by rules and regulations. What victory is faith if we are not free to choose it? The question we face is not of the moment, but of such a magnitude that we choose today whether liberty can survive in a democracy unrestrained by a constitution. Can a civilization that chooses to transfer the fruits of labor from one group to another, can such a civilization long endure? Won't we inevitably run out of other people's money? <laughs> the American experiment with liberty is not totally won. Today, tomorrow, and the day after, we must fight to restrain Big Brother. Will you stand with me? Will you stand together against the rising tide of government excess that threatens to trap us in the clutches of Big Brother? Will you stand with me? Liberty is under assault like never before. In Washington and on the campaign trail, Republicans and Democrats alike call out for bigger government. Only a president who understands the corrupting influence of big government can stop it. On the right, the call is for enlarging the military state. On the left, the call is for enlarging the welfare state. And the dirty little secret the dirty little secret in Washington is that the right and the left always get what they want, more spending. And you, you get stuck with the bill. The loudest voices in Washington for more spending are actually right now coming from Republicans. Recently, Cruz and Rubio, they put forward an amendment to increase military spending $200 billion. This would add $200 billion to the debt. When I countered them with an amendment that would have cut domestic spending in order to pay for it, they refused to support the cuts. The inconvenient truth is that you cannot be a conservative if you are liberal with military spending. <laughs> We do not become a stronger or a safer nation if we borrow from China to inflate our military budget. We spend more on our military budget than Russia, plus China, plus the next eight countries combined. There's waste everywhere, from $43 million for a natural gas gas station in Afghanistan to a million dollars for a televised Afghani cricket league. They don't even have televisions in Afghanistan. The only 
problem is, is that this unholy compromise is that the Republicans, you know what they, they get more Republican, they get more military spending, but only if they trade Democrats a whopping dose of increased domestic spending. If we want to balance a budget, if we truly do believe in what we say we believe in, all spending must be restrained. Yeah. Every Republican says they're for balancing the budget, but nobody ever does it. I've actually introduced three budgets that balance. I've been able to do it by actually cutting spending across the board. The National Taxpayers Union has recognized this. They've named me the most frugal lawmaker in Washington because I'm willing to look for waste everywhere across the board. Yeah. Right, yeah. right and left spend too much money, but they also are carelessly infringing on our civil liberties. Both parties are contributing to an assault on your Bill of Rights. The left attacks your Second Amendment, your right to bear arms. The right attacks your Fourth Amendment, your right to be left alone. I'm the only candidate that stands for the entire Bill of Rights. Since the terrorist attack in San Bernardino, the left calls out for more gun control, while the right calls out for more people control. The left calls for bans on gun sales, and the right clamors for the government to gather up all of our records. I don't know about you, but I say that our phone records are none of their damn business. <laughs> They claim we can't be safe without letting the government inspect everything, collect all of our records. But there's no evidence that these actions have made us any safer. Two bipartisan commissions investigated the government's bulk collection of data, and they found absolutely zero terrorist plots were thwarted. The circuit court, the court just below the Supreme Court, ruled that the bulk collection of your phone records is illegal. And yet, Stum still want to bring it back. Rubio said, we've got to have it back. We can't be safe unless we look at everything you own. I say it's wrong, and I say it has to end. We need to protect your privacy. <laughs> now, Cruz, he claimed he was with us on reforming the NSA. But I think he talks out of both sides of his mouth. <laughs> Did you hear his explanation in the debate? He says he voted for the, bo the bill to reform the NSA because he wants to allow the government to collect 100% of your cell phone records. <laughs> if his goal is to collect 100% of your cell phone records, he greatly misunderstands the liberty movement. I've got a better idea. How about we collect zero percent of your cell phone records? When I am president, we will once again respect the Fourth Amendment with as much vigor as we defend the Second Amendment. Amen. When I am president, we will once again defend the entire Bill of Rights from top to bottom. Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, Marco Rubio. They all tell you that they want to carpet bomb the Middle East. Oh. Cruz tells you he wants to make the sand glow. Oh. 
Trump says the problem is we haven't been willing enough to use our nuclear weapons. I'm the only candidate that asks, will indiscriminate bombing of civilians create more terrorists than it actually kills? I'm the only one willing to point out that every time we've used our military might to topple secular dictators, from Hussein to Gaddafi, the result has been chaos. And the void has been filled not with Jeffersonian democracy, <laughs> but with radical Islam. The Iraq war alone cost us a trillion dollars. We lost 5,000 of our finest young men and women, thousands more live on with catastrophic injuries. As Commander-in-Chief, I will never, never ignore the human cost of war. The other candidates offer you more of the same, macho rhetoric, fear-mongering, and perpetual war. Rubio says we should shun Putin. Caton says we should punch Russia in the nose, whatever that means. <laughs> Christie says he's ready to shoot down Russian planes currently flying over Syria and Iraq. And yet no one asked what next. Alone on the stage, I call for a reasonable, a realist foreign policy where we stand strong enough to deter any attack, but not eager to start World War III. Yeah. When I am president, I will adhere to the Reagan doctrine yes. 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 that war should be the last resort, not the first. Yeah. And when I am president, we will only fight wars that are constitutionally declared by Congress. Yeah. When I am president, we will only fight war to defend America, not for regime change, and not for nation building. Yeah. Now, one candidate in particular wants you to give him power. He tells you he's so rich, he must be smart. If you give him power, he will fix America. But you know, there's another tradition in America, a tradition that believes that power corrupts and that our goal should not be to gain power, but to contain power and to limit presidential power. Our founding fathers feared centralization of power. As Madison wrote, where an excess of power prevails, no man is safe in his opinions, his person, or his possessions. Our founders wrote the Constitution to restrain the accumulation of power by government. Trump is ignorant of this tradition. And in many cases, he is overtly opposed to the limited government philosophy. He believes that the government has the right to seize your property and give it to a rich crony through eminent domain. This is abhorrent to anyone who champions the rights of the individual. He supported the government bailing out the big banks. He's used the government to get rich and bully his competition, and now he asks you to give him power. No this race should not be about which candidate 
or this race should be about which candidate will protect you from an overbearing government, not about which candidate will grab the ring of power. Electing Gollum should not be our objective. I'm the only one in this race who doesn't want power or dominion over you. I want to set you free, I want to leave you alone, and I want a government so small you can barely see it. For several years now, as you know, I've been fighting against indefinite detention. This is a law that allows American citizens to be imprisoned without a jury trial, a law that was unfortunately signed by President Obama a few years ago. My fear is that one day a president might use indefinite detention the same way FDR did to send Japanese Americans to internment camps or to detain African Americans like they did in the Old South. Power corrupts, as we have seen with an out of control IRS, using its power to harass and intimidate conservatives for their political beliefs. The IRS presumes you are guilty until proven innocent. Imagine being detained without a trial because your own government deems you suspect but does not have to prove it. When I think of the terrible possibilities of indefinite detention, I'm reminded of a scene from To Kill a Mockingbird when Atticus stares down the vigilante mob that has come to lynch Tom Robertson. Luckily, Scout comes to the rescue, as she always does. She recognizes the leader of the mob as the father of a boy from her class. I go to school with your son, Walter, she says. He's in my grade and he does right well. I beat him up once, but he was real nice about it. <laughs> Tell him hey for me, won't you? The little girl broke the angry mood of the mob by personalizing it. Scout found the inner humanity that exists even in a mob hell-bent on violence. When there is a mob intent on indiscriminate government surges, searches, when there is a mob intent on detention without trial, then someone must stand and shout down that mob. As president, I will not only shout down the mob, I will end indefinite detention once and for all. When everyone says we must give up our liberty for a false sense of security, I can't help but think of Atticus again. When Atticus took the case of defending Tom Robinson, most of the townsfolk thought him wrong. In Washington, that sentiment is often true. After my filibuster for the right to be left alone, some said I was the most unpopular man in Washington. It felt that way. <laughs> But I thought of what Atticus said. Before I can live with other folks, I gotta live with myself. The one thing that doesn't abide with majority rule is conscience. <coughs> the majority's not always right. In fact, the majority is quite often wrong. An idea whose time has come, as Victor Hugo said, an idea whose time has come is stronger than all armies. For a Republican to win again, see this isn't just about the primary. We get caught up in the primary, it's about winning the presidency, which means winning Iowa, which hasn't always been easy. But for us to win again, we will need to be brave enough, brave enough to believe that ideas are powerful, maybe even stronger than armies. Yeah. To win, we will need to be a bigger, better, bolder party. We need to welcome people of all walks of life, 
black, white, brown, with tattoos, without tattoos, with earrings, without earrings, in overalls and in suits. We need to become a bigger, more diverse party. As my dad always says, liberty. As my dad always says, liberty brings people together. It's the common desire to be left alone that binds us all as unique individuals. After all, big government hurts people from all walks of life, rich and poor. The woman in Detroit who wants to run a hair braiding business, who's run out of her apartment and shut down by big government. The developer moving dirt on his own land who's jailed by armed EPA agents. The <laughs> The small business that can't compete with corporations and their armies of compliance officers, accountants and lawyers. The elderly woman losing her home to eminent domain, also known as Donald Trump. <laughs> the teenager from a poor family facing jail time for marijuana. What do these individuals all have in common? They're losing their liberty to big government. Today, your government has 48 federal agencies from the IRS to the Department of Education that all have their own SWAT teams. Is that freedom? No! When I am president, these attacks on your liberty will stop once and for all. The GOP has been the party of emancipation. We are the party of civil rights. We need to be the party of justice. Yeah. Justice begins when the war on drugs ends. Yeah. A generation of young black men have been incarcerated and permanently lost the privilege of voting and the opportunity of work. The war on drugs has disproportionately incarcerated those who live in poverty in our cities. Though blacks, though blacks and whites use drugs at similar rates, three out of four people in prison are black or brown. We must begin to treat addiction as a health problem, not an incarceration problem. For five years, I fought for a vote on Audit the Fed. When I finally got the vote, Ted Cruz was nowhere to be found. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> In fact, Ted was the only Republican to miss the vote. But even worse, Ted maintains that the correct response to the Great Recession was to have the Fed more aggressively lower interest rates, when we all know that artificially low interest rates are the problem, not the solution. When I am president, the Federal Reserve will learn that their days of unlimited power are over. America has much greatness left in her. We are still exceptional, and we are still a beacon for the world. We'll thrive when we believe in ourselves again. I see an America 
strong enough to deter foreign aggression, yet wise enough to avoid unnecessary intervention. I see an America where criminal justice is applied equally, and any law that disproportionately incarcerates people of color is repealed. Yeah. I see an America with a restrained IRS that cannot target and harass American citizens for their political or religious beliefs. I see a simplified flat tax that unburdens our citizens from the fear and intimidation of the IRS code. I would eliminate the entire tax code, the IRS, and unleash the engine of capitalism to create jobs and opportunity like never before. We have the highest corporate taxes in the world. Is it any wonder, is it really any wonder that our companies are leaving our shores? Money goes where it's welcome. I would bring corporate investment back by cutting our corporate tax and immediately bringing home two trillion dollars in American profit. I see our big cities. I see our big cities once again shining and beckoning with creativity and ingenuity, with American companies offering American jobs. I have a vision for an America beyond partisan squabbling, beyond petty divisions. With your help, this message will ring from coast to coast, a message of liberty, justice, and personal responsibility. A message that can gain support from across the political spectrum. A message that can prevail and win the White House. <laughs> the journey to take back America will not be easy. It will not be without obstacles. But together, we can do what others say is not possible. Stand with me now as together we seek a new vision for America. I ask for your vote today for the presidency of the United States. Thank you. Thank you.